think it was so much that I was judged by other people for my body. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Radiant Women. I am so excited for my current guest or my next guest um, today, Angie Martin, and she's the founder of Pear Collection, whose mission is to eliminate the horrible relationship that pear-shaped women have with fashion for decades. Pear Collection is not an uh, innovating fashion brand, it's stand into a common sense brand that simply creates classic, beautiful, comfortable, and practical garments for women. Why? Because we shouldn't have to cry every time we go shopping, but should be offered a simple style tips to help us feel good about our bodies and look great while doing so. Thank you so much for joining me, Angie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to today. Yes. All right, now, um, Let's get started. So what, how did you, what made you come up with this concept or what made you create Pear Shape Collections? Yeah, I actually love telling this story. I was in the midst, I had just left my job that I'd had for five years to ultimately mm -hmm. go and just upskill and grow my own career. Uh, and I was looking for that power suit. So I went shopping with my partner because mm -hmm. I always go with my partner. Shopping has never been a great success for me in the past. So I went with him mm -hmm. so he could give me, you know, motivation to continue going. And yeah. we went in, all I was looking for was one pair of black pants that would just look nice. Mm -hmm. And as a petite pair, yeah. pants have always been a real sensitive spot for yeah. me. So. We went shopping. I grabbed 20 pairs of pants. We went into the fitting room. Not one of those 20 pairs of pants actually fit. Um, so like any girl would do, I broke down crying <laughs> in the fitting room and started to basically curse the fashion industry. And my background, my first degree was in fashion design. So I created my first mm -hmm. company, um, which was a fashion design company when I was 12. And then I did my degree and then I moved to Australia. So I have a big background in fashion design and I started mm -hmm. to curse the industry um, because the industry itself doesn't create garments for curvy women. Um, just the okay. patterns that are made, the, Clothes are made out of base, a set of base patterns. Doesn't matter what brand yeah. you shop from, it's all based off of the same pattern. And it's not created for curves. So I started cursing the industry and being like, this is such a problem. My partner, bless his soul, was like, I don't understand why the clothes aren't fitting you. He loves my body, he loves my curves. And he's like, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I tried to explain it while crying. And I'm like, this is the issue why, this is why I hate shopping. Um, and he, he's an entrepreneur and I also am an entrepreneur anyways. And so he's like, well, you, you have the resources, you have the knowledge. Why don't you fix the problem then? This is obviously a problem that you and other women have. Why don't you fix it? So after a day of joking about doing it, I sat down and went, well, something does need to be done because trying on 20 pairs of pants and then crying in the fitting room um, is not great. And I don't want anyone else yeah. to experience that. So I created a pair of collections off of it. Wow, that's awesome. That's really, <clears throat> sorry, it, it, it's so inspiring. Um, so tell me why, I know you, um, you said, you know, sort of the, um, the current brands and things like that, they have this, um, you know, one blueprint and they go off this one, um, one shape, but why is it? Because there, there is so many curvy women out there. So it's not like it's a, you know, a massive minority. So they're, they're not catering to the world. Why isn't there when, you know, the, there's a big market for it. Why isn't there? It's 
just how it's always been. And I hate saying that answer, but that's how it's always been. It's always so the patterns themselves are based off of um, the rectangle body shape. Um, so they're not mm -hmm. even made off of, you know, there's apples. Everyone calls them different things, but there's pear shaped women, yes. men and women, apple shaped men and women, rectangular. I, the, some people call it triangle, inverted triangle, all different things. But the patterns themselves have always mm -hmm. been created off of rectangular women. And the reason for that is that it's this quote unquote status quo. So it's the one that's going to fit the mass amount of bodies. Um, because, and to be fair, it's one of those things as well. If you cater to one, you can't cater to any of the others. So rectangular, wow. yeah, the rectangular body shape mm -hmm. can kind of pass sometimes for everything else it's kind of just the in between mm -hmm. so that's why everyone kind of bases is off of it you know there are some brands that are like me who do tend to cater towards a certain body part or a certain yep. curve or anything like that but it's very few and far between and all the mass brands all just do the status quo because then they can serve the larger amount of consumers um, which is fair, that's fair, but, um, you know, for certain body types, the status quo is never going to work, and yes. the common consensus is that it's our fault that the clothes don't fit, and we think that it's yeah. wrong with us, um, where, no, even if you're a size two, a pair is a pair. Um, it doesn't yeah. matter what size you are, it's still not going to fit you right. So that's why I've decided to try and make that a bit of a change. Wow, that's awesome. So um, I, I know you said, you know, your, um, your partner uh, really loved, you know, loves your shape and loves your curves. And I imagine you would have had this struggle of going into the fitting rooms because, you know, like you knew before you even left the house, you knew what was going to happen in that fitting room. Um, what was it like sort of um, growing up with that? And did that change the view of yourself that, you know, you just didn't fit into the box that was created for you? And, you know, no matter how you tried, you couldn't make yourself, squeeze yourself in there. Yeah, I grew up. I like everyone else could, but you couldn't. Yeah, I grew up very, I would say, almost traumatized. Um, so I was one of those lucky people. Mm -hmm. My mom was a pear shaped woman as well. So um, mm -hmm. you can kind of look at it as lucky or unlucky. So I had a lot of my early body image point of view from her. Um, yep. she's absolutely a gorgeous woman. She is pear shaped. Um, I got my cankles from her as well, which is very common <laughs> for pear shaped women to have cankles. It's great. Um, but I always, I was one of those girls. I played with Barbies a lot growing up and I always wanted to be a Barbie, you know, that, that that's what we grew up yeah. looking at. That that's what you're supposed to look like. And puberty hit. I was a ballerina as well. Um, wanted to be a prima ballerina puberty hit mm -hmm. and the crashing world of everything came down when I realized I was never going to be a ballerina because I'm wow. five foot four, five foot five on a quote unquote good day. Yeah. <laughs> so I never got the height to be a ballerina and I turned into a pear shaped woman. So I was never going to be a Barbie. Uh, yeah. Was very crushing as a young girl who grew up looking at, you know, Barbies and being like, this is what, you look like um so then going in in creating clothes and designing clothes i again started to create clothes off of my own body and very easily learned that my body wasn't the status quo but body measurements that also wasn't the easiest thing to uh, accept my first garment that i made for myself was when i was in uh, year eight so realizing in year eight how off my body measurements were weren't great which was what what was what age would have been that 13 um, yeah 12 13 i think something yeah, like yeah. that yeah so that wasn't great 
um, <laughs> to, to learn that my measurements are actually like, quote, unquote, wrong. Um, yes. Making clothes. So from there, you know, I instantly hated shopping as a teenager. Girls used to majority love going out to do shopping trips. I never did that because um, I knew the clothes didn't fit me and I felt very self-conscious. Um, and I grew up self, like self-loathing and hating my body type uh, yeah. up to the point that even in my 20s, I would always wear makeup, always have my hair done, even if no one else was seeing me. Um, wow. I always had to have that kind of facade done to give myself self-worth and self-value. Yeah. And it wasn't until I turned 26 that mm -hmm. I went, no, this isn't good. I need to value myself more. And I started my journey towards loving myself, loving who I am, loving my body type. Um, and it's an ongoing basis. It's an ongoing project, but, um, yeah. you know, it, it's being that self-aware, um, has helped me create pair, which is also helping to do the same for all of our community, which is great. Yeah. yeah. And I love that because what I've just heard from that is what's, um, it sort of commonly happens where, you know, we have this one standard and if we don't fit into it, we think, okay, so, you know, it may impact your body image, but as you said, it, it really didn't. It impacted how you lived your life based on this one thing. It impacted, you know, how you spent your time as a teenager in, in um, early adulthood. And um, as you said, you know, like putting on makeup just to feel beautiful because, the magazines, the world told you you weren't because you want this, I don't know, this, you know, this idea of a Barbie, which is, you know, where we get a lot of our, as young girls, we get a lot of our idea of what pretty is. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I've seen it um, when they actually blow up Barbie in, in real life. I know. She's like, it's weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But she's not human. She's a, she's a robot. She's like, you know, I don't know, like so out of proportion. Mm -hmm. And this is what then what we based our beauty, you know, our, our, our standards on. And it's crazy. It is. It um, is. Especially also growing up, you know, I, I created my first fashion business when I was 12 as well. So knowing that I wanted to be in the fashion industry mm -hmm. was always very self-sabotaging almost um, as well because I was designing clothes for models which I knew I was never going to be a model. I never could wear yes. any of the clothing I did and made in school when I was going to school for fashion design because it would never fit me. Um, yeah. Again, it just really reignited the fact that my body was wrong. Um, yes. Which really, you know, continued to really affect things. So it's been a long journey. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, how did that feel meeting yourself in your, as I call it, as is, so meeting yourself in where you are in this moment, whatever it may be, and then learning to accept it and then accepting, you know, an obviously ongoing process and it is for all of us and it never stops and that's the beauty of it. But I guess, you know, learning to accept it and because um, we often – think, you know, it's other people, and it is obviously, it's other people's judgments that makes us feel um, low or unworthy and or, or not enough and all of these things, but it's also our own interpretation of ourselves, mm. like you just said. Yeah. So what did that feel like, accepting yeah, yourself? Yeah, it was terrifying. It was very, um, very, yeah, very terrifying and just very, all of a sudden, earth shattering, shattering. Um, you Ooh. know, I, I think in my life, mm -hmm. I, I was I, growing up, I was the pretty daughter. Um, you know, I was the okay. daughter who always put the effort, you know, my sister was a horse rider. She was dirty most of the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was the clean daughter. I, my mom was the one that I would, I would let her do my breaths and my hair and stuff where my sister would rip her hair out if she had a breath. Um, you know, I was, I was that daughter growing up as well. So 
um, you know, having the realization of that after all of that, um, I don't think it was so much that I was judged by other people for my body. It was more of me perceiving other people judging me. Um, yes. That. You know, yeah, I don't actually think I was judged that much. Um, it was more of what a comment would be made and then I would turn it into my perceived vision of myself. Yes. Um, so it definitely wasn't so much judging because I've always been, I'm a petite pair. So when you see me, I'm like a size eight. Um, mm -hmm. you see me, you don't instantly notice the pair aspects of me. It's not until you start looking a bit closer where you're like, her legs are really short. They're really thick. Her torso is really long and slim. It, it takes a while to piece it together. So I don't think I've ever been judged yeah. so much, but I judge myself on what other people would say, even if they didn't mean it to be negative. So yeah. it was very, very um, scary when I realized that I was doing this to myself. It was the realization of I am tearing myself down. No one else is doing this. Um, it was very scary and it was a lot of really, I'm not going to say horrible, but really um, impactful moments of sitting there and going, you are worth more than you're telling yourself and no one's doing this to you, but you, and you need to accept that and then move on from it. It was very mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what were you, um, what were you terrified of? So, and I know you said that, <clears throat> mm. that obviously, you know, like you, that realization, which is massive, you know, that I was the one putting labels on myself um, as much, you know, even if people around me were or weren't, you know, I was the one also contributing to this. Mm. Um, but then it, it sort of, you know, um, it would seem that, you know, realizing that would be liberating but you also say, and it probably was, but it was also terrifying. What were you terrified of? Because no one was going to change it but me. No one was responsible for it but me. It was the going, this is my problem. I can't get someone else to do it. It's no one's fault but mine. Um, so that's the part that was terrifying. It was liberating when I started to implement the change and I started to actually feel and experience the change. That's when I was like going through this hard discussions with myself is worth it. Um, that's when it was really liberating and it was the real acknowledgement that I was doing something that was worthwhile was when other people started to notice the change in me. Um, that was really liberating. But the terrifying part was that no one else could do it but me. It's I had to do it. And that didn't feel great when I would realize that. <laughs> As, yes, so sometimes a hard truth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell me, um, so did your world change and, um, or did the people around you or did anything change in terms of the outside, whether it be people or, um, I, I'm specifically talking about people, you know, because uh, I guess your energy changed from feeling small to then finding your voice and accepting yourself and that, you know, that helps you grow, not just mentally but also kind of energetically you stand up a little bit taller you, you know you, you're okay to take up space yeah did yeah, that I, change a lot change um yeah. a lot changed so um my career changed i started valuing myself and my own self-worth with my knowledge for my career completely mm -hmm. changed um since then you know my value has almost tripled for how much I'm expected people to pay to be working with me. Um, mm -hmm. 
which is crazy to think that it's tripled. Um, yeah. Just by working on myself and realizing that I am worth this. And if someone doesn't want to pay that, well, then that's their problem. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I unfortunately, my friends did change. So there was a couple friends that I realized weren't positively impacting my life. And uh -huh. when I was going through the change, they didn't like it and didn't weren't supportive of it. Yep. So unfortunately I did lose, there was three friends that were really, really close friends of mine that unfortunately, um, you know, I hold no ill will towards them, but mm -hmm. we just don't speak anymore because they weren't positively reacting to me trying to improve and better myself. Um, yeah. On the flip side, though, I had some other friends that our relationships have gotten better and closer because we supported each other in doing it as well. I have another friend who is also a pear-shaped woman. Uh, she's a personal trainer, and so that leads a whole other conversation for her as well, for being a pear-shaped woman. <laughs> Um, for being a personal trainer um, and we we our relationship completely changed after because we were both doing it strangely at the same time of really yeah. valuing ourselves and so um, that relationship has really improved uh, the relationship with my family has also mm -hmm. completely changed where um, you know, because of COVID, I hadn't seen them for a while. I'm Canadian, so my family's in Canada, and I went to see them. Mm -hmm. And in just that two and a bit year period where we haven't mm -hmm. seen each other in person, every single family member took me aside this past trip um, to acknowledge how much I've grown and developed as a woman, as a person, and as their daughter in a positive light. Yes. yes. Um, so that was really, really lovely to hear as well, because, you know, of course we Skype and everything, but there were like my entire presence of me has um, been positively affected. So that's really nice. That's awesome. I love that. And um, I love, you know, what you've just said there in terms of, you know, some people come and some people go and it's just, uh, whether it's an expiration date on that relationship or whether it's, um, you know, whatever it is that it's, cause that's what we're afraid of losing. And, and that's um, sometimes, you know, if I change, then people won't love me or people won't like me or, you know, um, and it very much is because uh, sometimes people in our lives is, you know, I know you a certain way. We have a certain energy between us mm. that I may be big, you may be small and let's keep it at that. And if you start changing that, I'm not comfortable because then I have to change and I don't want to change. So, you know, I'd rather sabotage you and keep you in your place than me having to, and you know, it's, it's really that kind of dynamic and it's so important and so amazing that you have, that you were able to let it go and not hang on to something that wasn't serving you. It was hard. I'm not going to lie. It was really hard. There was a lot of nights of just crying my eyes out, specifically about one friend who was almost like my surrogate sister. Um, it was really, really horrible. It was we were all friends in the same friend group, mm -hmm. and um, it, it it still sometimes hurts to this day. But um, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things I can't control what they do. They can't control what I do, and. If she ever changes, I'm always here to restart that friendship. And I've left it in, in good terms in my you know, own way kind of thing. Um, I yeah. also had a really supportive partner who helped me through all of it, um, mm -hmm. which was really, really lovely. He, he loved who I was, and then he loved supporting me and becoming a better me. Um, so that was really great, but it was very difficult at the beginning yeah 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 but i i assume i it it must have been worth it a hundred percent you know especially with pair collections it's one of those things that pair has always come it's always been me it's always been really authentic really 
um, honest, every garment that Pear does, I wear. I basically only wear my own brand simply because it's comfortable and it fits me and it makes me feel good about myself. Um, so having that and that community that I've created through Pear, we all kind of support each other and it allows that growth to kind of happen as a community which mm -hmm. helps as well so it's it's 100 percent been worth all the work and the tears and the moments of like what are you doing snap out of it deal with it get over it one of my great aunts um her favorite saying is just get over it um and <laughs> and my family uses it for almost everything and sometimes you just need to get over it and accept yeah. what you have and then be happy and be thankful for what you have because you know with everything is your body you only get one body and so you may as well love it because if you don't no one else is and if you're not mm -hmm. going to take care of it it's not going to take care of you so get over it and move on <laughs> yes i love that i love that no one else will love if you don't love it how can how can you expect other people to love it? Yeah. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Let me just ask you, um, in terms of that business and then starting it, you know, we have, I guess, you know, the way um, we, I have this idea in my head, you know, because you have all this background, you have all this knowledge, it was just smooth sailing and voila, you know, this, and um, I was looking at your product and they're absolutely amazing. And um, I also went and I, I had a look on your Facebook and I was kind of taking notes because there was a lot of you do a lot of like a mini series tips and how to style this with that and you know it may not necessarily be just your product maybe jewelry and things like that which is absolutely awesome um but tell me that journey from starting that business to where you are now fully established and you know just doing amazing how how did that go oh, so much fun <laughs> Uh, there was so many great ups and downs. Uh, it, it was one of those things that you know, I'm really lucky as well. My partner, he creates websites and does digital marketing, and I'm a digital marketing specialist. So from the business creation point of view, it was actually quite easy. Uh, and then the manufacturing process also, again, was easier than most businesses simply because I am a specialist in creating garments. Uh, so I was I already had manufacturers that I knew and trusted, and then I could guarantee and count on the, the actual product quality. So mm -hmm. doing all that was quite easy. Getting them to create the clothing with the specifications that I was asking them wasn't so easy because again, from their point of view, they had to completely change how they were sewing and making the clothing because I was changing the patterns that they were cutting. So yes. that also made it really, really interesting in communicating with them to make sure that they understood the changes that were being requested. And, you know, even with this dress, this is the little wrap dress. It's one of my favorite items. It's something that looks so dressy on, but it's actually so comfy. Um, uh, I wear it all the time just because it's so comfy. But this dress took um, three three different samples of getting it right uh, because mm -hmm. the fabric wasn't right the first time, the cut wasn't right, this up here wasn't right, the hips weren't right. Um, so it took a lot of trial and error to make sure that it would fit for me and then it would fit for someone bigger than me, smaller than me, yes. someone who's more pair than me. Um, so that took a little while. And then um, the actual promotion of the business was very interesting because, again, it's a very sore topic, talking about our bodies and admitting to ourselves that we don't have the mannequin bodies. Uh, so yeah. that alone was very interesting and it was also very hard. My first photo shoot that was planned with other people other than me wearing the garments was the weekend after we went into COVID lockdown for the first time. Oh. So, yeah, I had been working, it had been two months, two and a half months of planning with hair and makeup, photography, three models, 
a location, everything. And the day, I think it was like the Thursday or something, we officially went into lockdown. It was that Saturday that it was planned. So um, that was fun. So we, my partner and I did, ended up doing a photo shoot just at our house with me again as, with, as the model because we needed some photography. <laughs> Uh, so that was that was very interesting um, to try and get professionally done photos during COVID. Uh, that yes. was very interesting. But thankfully, from it, I've created, I now have photographers that are my base photographers for the range. And uh, that's really great. But it's been a mm -hmm. constant, constant struggle to do a delicate mm -hmm. balance of educating and helping other people love themselves um, and then value themselves to say, no, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to list a brand, but don't think they're horrible. I'm not going to just go to Kmart and buy a yes. $50 pair of jeans that I know aren't going to fit me. I'm going to spend a little bit more to get jeans that are going to fit me and last more than a year. Um, that every time I put them on, I'm going to feel amazing. Yes. So yes. That, yeah. it's, it's a, it, it's a difficult thing because with pair, we don't just want to sell clothes. We don't, we're not fast fashion. We're a capsule mm -hmm. range. So we do limited items that do a span of mixing and matching. So you don't have to buy as much. There's not as much waste. Mm -hmm. It's more sustainable and it all fits you really well. Uh, so getting people to, realize that they don't have to buy clothing all the time to feel amazing, mm -hmm. that if they just have one item and it makes you feel incredible, you don't need to do that. And it, we're not programmed to do that anymore. So it's, it's, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> I can imagine. Wow. And that is, um, it, and it is, um, we don't often put value on how something will make us feel. So, we can go to Kmart and, you know, oh, as you said, you know, it, it doesn't matter wherever it is and, and buy it half the price. And as you said, not, not the great quality, but also, you know, we're wearing, we put it on and we know that it's not, there's always, you know, either a too much fabric somewhere. You're pulling and tugging. Yes. You get it on at home and you're like, oh, I'm just never not going to wear it after you buy it. It's. Yes. That's not good. And then you feel, <laughs> exactly. And as you said before, it's not, we don't think these clothes are not, you know, uh, these clothes are not the right fit for me. We think we're not the right fit for the clothes. And then that has an effect on our mental health. And then mm. how much price do you put on that? And as you said, we, you know, we're wearing once or we don't wear them once. We stick them somewhere in our wardrobe. And we hope that we will change so I can fit into that. And then we have that constantly in the back of our mind. I need to lose gains, do something about myself so I can fit into that. And that has an effect on your body, where on your body and on your mind as well. Whereas if so, we just go, yeah, and it affects yeah. everything. So I work with a lot of business owners and a lot of female business owners, and obviously my journey with pair always comes up in. It's actually really interesting when you talk with business owners and just anyone on how much that affects them with their self-confidence. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, it really makes a big difference. So with Pear, we like to not only just talk about, yeah, like we do clothing, it's awesome, but why is this clothing awesome for you and how is it going to positively change your life? Um, is a really big thing with us, which is why we do our style tips and tricks and why we talk about things like we even have an episode where it talks about don't wear a certain kind of shoe, um, yeah. which we have yeah, it's with shoes, but it's something that, again, it impacts on how you feel. And yeah. um, if we can help support people, then we want to. Yeah, and that's, that's really awesome if we um, went in shopping or whatever we did in with the mindset of, okay, how can I meet myself in the present moment where I am right now and how can whatever I buy not satisfy me in the short term through, you know, swiping the card and that excitement of buying something, yeah. how can this really serve me 
and make me feel good, our worlds will change. Uh, it, it, it's one of those things that I, I like to be really honest with her. It, it affects me so much. So even for example, for today, I am just in the midst of getting over COVID myself and I haven't been feeling awesome this week. And today I knew I was going to be talking with your lovely self. So I put on my go-to outfit, which yes. is this dress. I did it specifically so I would feel great. It instantly boosted my energy. It instantly gave me that little zap of confidence. And when you have something in your wardrobe that can do something that's so small of just making you want to sit up straighter or think, like look in the mirror and go, yeah, you know, I've got this. Yeah. It, it makes a big difference. Um, so yeah. it's definitely something that I like to really try and shout out to the world. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so, so much for talking to us. And um, guys, you have to go on, on um, the Facebook page, which is Pear Collections. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Or you can find us just on the web. It's paircollections.com.au. Super, super easy. Yeah. And it's so we'll just we'll link everything um, in, in the comments or in the description, wherever you're listening um, to this. Um, but it's just it has amazing tips on mm -hmm. how to style things and just how to feel great. And then if you when you look at the clothes, I'll just I'll let the clothes speak for themselves. I won't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I was actually thinking of doing today as well is offering your community a ongoing discount. So. Um, what I'll do is I'll send you through the coupon code. You can put it in your description and anyone who's watching this and wants to actually experience the clothing, I'll give you a 20% off to start the journey to loving your curves. Oh my God. Thank you so much. That's, that's amazing. We love that guys. Uh, so we'll put, definitely put the code in and this is going to be amazing. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and we'll hopefully chat to you again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I always finish my style tips with love your curves. Yes. <laughs>